the safe? Stephanie leave? Well, I don't see her broomstick anywhere, so she must have. Look, I, I know how difficult this is for you, Eric, but um, please just don't, don't keep me hanging. What happened? Is your marriage over? <laughs> for your sake, I hope it is. Oh. I'm not going anywhere. The company and that chair are off limits to you, Stephanie. According to this uh, agreement, anyway. Purchase that room. I've been perusing it. Don't waste your time. Very, very clever of you. Inserting the clause that in order to get control of the company, Eric has to divorce me. I had nothing to do with that. Okay. That was Nick. He wanted you out of Forrester Creations forever. <laughs> Be that as it may, it's unenforceable. And I'll bet you $50 Maroney's overpriced ambulance chasers knew that right from the beginning. Now, do you really think that'll make a difference to Eric? He's a man of his word. Which he gave to Nick and Jackie. He gave to Jackie? I wonder if she really believes he's a man of his word. I mean, after all, he broke his word to her when he didn't marry her and he married me again. Uh, oh, please. Everyone thought Felicia was dying. Eric came back for his daughter's sake. Not because he couldn't live without you. And if you deluded yourself into thinking otherwise, well, it just shows how desperate you are. <laughs> this from... This... From the girl who went after a married man while his wife was out of town. Wow. Talk about selective memory. And you make it sound like you were in India feeding the poor. When the truth is you had no choice but to leave L.A. After knowing how Eric and Ridge felt about you, what you did to my sister. I, for the 50,000th time, I... I did not do anything to your sister. If you stayed out of her life, there wouldn't have been a rape. But at least now, Brooke and Ridge are closer than ever, finding their way back to each other. And Eric and I, well, you know, it hasn't all just been sex. <laughs> Though when a man has gone that long without, who can blame him for being insatiable? Oh, honey, please. You're just a little sex toy to him. Nothing more. Wrong. I listen to him. How he thinks. How he feels. Something you could never be bothered to do. Yeah, I'm the partner that he wishes he always had, and, and now he does. Which leaves you out in the cold. You know, you should have accepted Brooke when I asked you to, because if you did, none of this would be happening. But now you got me to deal with. And I ain't going anywhere either. Donna Logan is going to be St. Joan to Eric Forrester's Dauphin. That's pretty laughable, honey. Fine. Keep underestimating me. It's your funeral. Not if I get my hands around that scrawny little neck of yours first, so to speak. Now, you see, you just keep proving my point. Eric is such a dear, decent man. And he deserves so much more than a bitter, frigid nag. As opposed to you, whose only two assets aren't even real. If you're insinuating oh, that come I on, honey, food. the sales tag on those are still wet. I'm sure like this mannequin, if I took a pin and punctured, it would pop. Psst. My husband requires something quite different in a woman. He really needs someone who's sophisticated and refined. And you, my little silicone baby, are not that and never will be. Don't be so sure. Let me ask you something, Donna. Have you two been out and about? Gone to the country club? Gone dancing, whining, dining around town? No, you haven't, have you? He's not going to take you out in public. You're fine in the bedroom, and that's as far as it's going to go. I know. Eric and I have kept it low profile for obvious reasons. I think it's because you're an embarrassment to him. You know, that is the same drivel you tortured Brooke with for years. 
But I am not my sister, and I don't want your approval. And now that Eric is divorcing you... He's not going to divorce me. But you are separated. Am I? Oh, Donna, I've been through this a hundred times. It always ends the same way. Eric comes back to me. He's not going to marry you, so don't get your hopes up. And now, I grant you, you're riding high at the moment. But, honey, that's all going to change once he gets tired of seeing you parade around in this little outfit or that little outfit or no outfit at all. You are just the flavor of the month. The truth is you have nothing of any substance to offer him. Never have and never will. Sex, my dear, can only take you just so far. Now, see, there you go, assuming. That's all there is to me. Surprise, surprise, I have a brain. A heart. I feel things just as deeply as you do. I'm in love with Eric. Like you were with Thorne. You know what? Fine. Don't believe me. I don't care. You may have a history with Eric, but he craves so much more. And I can give it to him. And I'm not just talking about incredible sex. But warmth. Respect. Appreciation. I treat Eric with dignity, and he treats me the same way. He sees beyond these and into my heart. And no, you know, I, I'm not perfect. And I will never be. But at least I don't try to control his every move. He'd be fool to give that up. And he's no fool, Stephanie. Neither am I. So if you're smart, you will just let him have some happiness for a change. And if you're not, well, and you keep pushing, just know that I will push back hard. In ways that you can't even begin to imagine. Your days with the man are over, Stephanie. It's my turn to be Mrs. Eric Forrester. There is nothing, nothing you can do about that! <laughs> 